guys, it's infinity and it is 5.30 on the 30th and, oh wow, there you go, 5.30 on the 30th, it's Monday, happy Monday, I hope you're doing well and had a great weekend, whatever you did, hopefully you practiced social distancing, which I am not a fan of that term. I'm not saying I have a better idea right now. <laughs> um, I'm just, I don't know. The term is just weird, but I like the concept in this sense in which we need it. Uh, so anyway, I hope that, that, that you had a great weekend, that you are feeling good. I know it's been, it's been rough with the numbers. If you're watching, uh, they're going up rapidly on both infected and critical and dead. Um, it's pretty bad in different places and it's just getting more intense. And we just got another order from the president, uh, yesterday on Sunday for this to continue through the end of April, through April 30th. So another month. And that is going to be, I mean, we're, it, this is just the way it's going to go. It's going to be like, okay, another month, we're going to need another month. <laughs> like, we're going to need another month because it's, it's just not going to be, we're not going to be done. And to be, you know, really safe about what we're, how we're going to, to live, uh, and with this situation, it's going to take extraordinary, extraordinary measures that nobody is prepared to, or, or wants and is avoiding. <laughs> so the longer that happens, the longer it's going to take but humans are extraordinarily stubborn by default. They don't heed warnings. They don't pay attention. They want what they want when they want it. And I mean, for holy mother fuck, we had what, eight, 10 days of a lot of not even a full, not even anywhere near a lockdown in this country but different states imposed different different lockdowns or different shelter in place. There has yet to be a quarantine of any kind. When, uh, but anyway, I mean, we were like seven, eight days in. And it was like, when is this going to end? We can't take this anymore. The economy won't last. And I'm like, seriously? Let's get back. Oh, need to get back to work. It's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like, can we just calm our shit for a second and pay attention to what's going on and realize the magnitude of this? And to say under, even under the 15 day, the first 15 days that, that was put in place, uh, whatever, you know, this is that he, that he did, uh, I mean, we're like a week away from that almost. And it was. And it was like, when, when is this going to end? And then Easter was brought up, <laughs> which is ridiculous, ridiculous. And everybody knew it. But, you know, and I honestly think that the president, and I hate calling him that because he's just so unpresidential. It, it drives me insane. Uh it really does. Um, but anyway, uh, I think he, he in particular gets under my skin and especially now because he's being so reckless and so nasty 
and so self-centered. I mean, he never goes on TV and says, let's take a moment to think about the families, to think about the people who have lost their lives when they wouldn't have if this wasn't a, a situation, if this wasn't going on. Let's think about, you know, he never takes any time to acknowledge the human beings that are the numbers. He just, it's numbers to him. And, and it's, it's crazy. Uh, today he was talking about how 100,000 or 200,000 deaths would be acceptable because projected, if you didn't do anything at all, it could be 2.2 million Like that makes any kind of sense from any angle whatsoever. And I don't think I need to break it down for you people how absolutely insane that is. One, that we wouldn't do anything when there's a fucking pandemic going on. And the and I mean, how could we not do anything? That's a that's a a it's it's a it's a, I mean, do, I don't even have the words to describe what that's supposed to be. It, it's a, it's, it's a projection. It's a, it's a, it's a thing to say, this is what could be if, if you are deaf, blind, blind, and stupid and don't see the storm that you're in or the freight train coming at you. Like, look, if you stand in front of a train, this could be you splattered everywhere. And this is you if you don't do that. Like, obvious. Like, it doesn't, it's just so stupid. It's, a, it's, it's to illustrate. It's an illustration of, of, you know, if everybody lost brain power, what could happen? Like, I don't even know. It's just such a silly thing to be like, if we did nothing, it would be 2.2 million. So we're doing awesome. And if we lose 100 or 200,000 it's better than 2.2 million. I think that would be a win. Literally said that today. For those of you who d don't know or didn't watch, and and I implore you, implore you not to, because he's so into his ratings right now. He's he's like he's like my ratings are getting better than The Bachelor. That means something. And it's like really, fucking really. You're the president. Of course people are going to tune in to hear what's going on from the fucking White House, you dolt. Oh my God. Like, seriously? Seriously. Uh, and then he also accused uh, hospitals in the New York City area of mismanaging or or black marketing or hoarding or stealing their PPE, specifically their masks. Those doctors are, are using makeshift masks and, and goggles and Halloween masks and bandanas because they don't have the PPE that they need. And, and, and this motherfucker knew about this for two months plus. I mean, that's on the conservative side of how long he's been aware. On the very conservative side of you better do some shit and still didn't do any shit. But he knew about it well before that. <sighs> it's frustrating with this idiot and the way that he behaves. He's so diabolical he's diabolical and and it's terrifying that he that he's you know the one sitting in the driver's seat there was a tweet just a little bit ago saying how uh dr fauci told uh, told and he's like the the head immunologist doctor that that's he's working with that it's obvious it's difficult for him because you know Donald Trump 
and this tw this tweet where is it here we go so brian stetler tweeted dr fauci on cnn in quotes we argued strongly with the president that he not withdraw those guidelines after 15 days, but that he extend them, and he did listen. So my response to that was the fact that they argued strongly, so at real Donald Trump, I tagged him, wouldn't make the worst mistake of his life since signing a $130,000 check is extraordinarily telling. At the same time, he has set himself up for a win if less than 2.2 million people die. Hashtag our diabolical president. Hashtag COVIDiot. I love that hashtag. COVIDiot. <laughs> I find it pretty awesome that in this day and age you can you can literally let anybody know how you feel about them who's on twitter specifically it seems to be the most easiest way i've never been a twitter person until now like i just joined twitter in just a couple of weeks or a week ago whatever it was uh i think it was the 17th and i've tried i've tried but I've never been a, I've tried, I probably started up like, I don't even know how many Twitters, but I could just, I didn't really know any, like, it, I, I didn't know who to follow and I'm not like somebody to follow people and you know, it just was weird. I could never get into it. I don't know. I could never get into it. Even with my businesses could never get into it. It was just always <laughs> so like, what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I tried a few times. It was like crickets. It was like you tweet, tweet, and it was like nothing, you know, no response at all. I couldn't, I didn't know where to go. It's like I didn't care about anything enough to, 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 to follow anybody or, you know, I'm not a celebrity person. I'm not a political person. I, um, I'm not a, a sports person to the extent ever that I would care enough. You know, I've always had my own shit going on in my own life, you know, and it's been pretty intense. And so, you know, following, it just hasn't been my thing. But with the pandemic, now there's a, fo now there's something to focus on and there's specific things to, to take a look at and to, and to listen to and to follow. And it's a great place for information. Um, or at least to know what the information that's going out is and, and to get kind of even better pulse on what people think. And, and it's pretty extraordinary to see the words of people that just think Trump is just amazing and <laughs> he's just not. And then the people who are so angry with him and so appalled and so, and there's a lot of people that used to be on his side. They're just like, all right, I'm out. I can't anymore with this guy. Like, I just can't. I'm seeing more and more of that. Uh, there's now there's like boycott his briefings because it's just like he's just making it like I, I had another tweet today. I'm like, he's doing bits up there like this is his bit. To, like He wants to infuriate as many people. So he sits around and thinks about like what the worst shit I could possibly say that's just going to rile people up. And just he does. He knows what to do to keep himself talked about. He doesn't care what what it really he just likes the energy he's a he's a complete narcissist and extraordinarily negatively charged and nothing about him is sincere he's a sociopath he has narcissistic personality disorder uh he's a compulsive liar uh those two usually go together or three actually usually go together uh, you know, master manipulator, uh, all sorts of stuff. Like, I, th I honestly think that him delaying going into the um, Defense Production Act, or I think that's what it's called, him delaying that 
I think was very strategic. He called himself the wartime president. Now let's, okay, let me just say right now. I fully wholeheartedly believe that this man is not an intelligent person, that he has such an overblown ego and such a, it inflated sense of self and self-righteousness and um, needing to be the center of attention and feeling as though he literally doesn't say or do anything wrong. And if you pair it back to him, what he, anything that he has said that doesn't sound good now, he calls it a lie. And he, if you say it to him, he says you're nasty. And that's what happened today with journalists. He was, they, he berated and tried to belittle and bully uh, journalists who were just saying, hey, you said this, how do you, like, can you clarify that? And he was like, hey, you're being nasty. Just a really big deal. Um, that went down today. He was in, he was in, straight form today he was all in today he is every day but he just came out guns blazing uh at the top of the show uh he started talking about the pp and why are these masks how did they disappear and all that stuff anyway back to this defense act thing um he called himself a wartime president uh and and then he has taken his own sweet time to enact this defense production act or bill or whatever it is. Um, and I, I think that was very strategic. And like I was saying, well, I think that he is all of those things and not, and really truly not a very intelligent person. I think that it, probably if you were to count his vocabulary words, that the words that he knows this this genius uh it would it would not be that much like his vocabulary is pretty limited he, that's why he says like somebody i know today said he says the same things all the time and i said yeah it's because he knows like a hundred words so he doesn't have a whole lot to to pick and choose from so that's why it sounds repetitive plus he repeats himself like crazy he loves to hear himself I mean, holy moly. Uh, <laughs> and what he's doing is just, it's so dangerous. Like he, there, like I said, he, he, he doesn't want this to reflect on him. So he's not doing things. Uh, and then he's doing things very strategically at the same time. It's, it's, it's because, oh, I keep forgetting the end point of what I want to say about that. Him being what he is, diabolical and narcissistic and all these things, and not very intelligent, only knowing a few words, uh, and somehow, yet, being the most, one of the most powerful people on the planet with the decisions that he can make that he's ultimately responsible for that he says he doesn't take any responsibility for he only takes responsibility when it's like good job other than that no responsibility <laughs> when i was given this job given the job you ran for the job remember like <laughs> Nobody's like, hey, you got this job. Now, oh, now because it's not fun and you're in a pandemic, you were given the job. Interesting. Um, so he's an idiot. But the people around him are pretty smart. That's the one thing that's, that is somewhat intelligent about him is that he is smart enough to know who smart people and truly intelligent people are. And because he has money and power and has always had the shadiest of attorneys and, and henchmen around him. And I think that his impeachment, entire impeachment trial and situation, things that came out there prove that. So he's been able to dig up dirt to find bad things about people 
you know, those skeletons in the closet kind of shit about people because he has so much money that he can pay people to investigate, build little files up of people, and then and then use them as buttons to manipulate. I mean, remember Ted Cruz? Remember Lindsey Graham back in the day and how badly they fucking hated him? Hated him? It's quite a turn they've made, don't you think? Hmm. Wonder why that is. Wonder why. Could it be that he has dug up the shit on Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz, just to name a couple, that are that are little teat sucklers of his and have become? I mean, the shit that pours out of their mouths in defense of this guy is is enough to make your head spin for any circumstance or anybody saying it, even a person who has been on his side the whole time, but especially for those who fucking hated him. I mean, it's one thing to be in alignment with your party and with the president out of duty, but they take it to another fucking level, don't you think? If, you're, if you know anything about this stuff, if you don't, more power to you. But it's been in my, it's been my job to pay attention to this stuff. So I know what's going on here. With the collective, it's important. Like I know I can feel things energetically, but I can't fully stick my head in the sand to the outside world and be like, oh, it's all fake anyway. And it's this and that and blah, 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 blah. It's the reality that we live in. And we, and for some of us that are in the position of broadcast, we need, I feel, uh, even as a spiritual person, we need and, and have the responsibility to be aware of the happenings in our world. So that's why I know these things. And because I am who I am and I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about what I feel or know or say, I truly do not. Uh, I'm, I, and I'm a very passionate person, especially when somebody is so dark and negative and uses people and manipulates people and uses his power and wealth to be just the nastiest person. And, and at the same time, I know that his place is very and has been very necessary because of what it, what he's a catalyst for, what he's been a catalyst for. So there's been a lot of things that have been very progressive and people have gotten involved in different ways because of, of him. That wouldn't have happened if, let's say, Hillary Clinton would have been president. It would have been very much status quo. Uh, yeah. So, and I, I think a lot of people have caught up to that. I was saying that years ago in the first few months of his presidency when I would get into Ubers and Lyfts and people would just be, all the drivers would just unload and be like, oh, Donald Trump. And I would be like, yeah, but you know what? Because this was information that was given to be, me by my guides when I would just sit there and just go seriously and get really, this would be like during the beginnings of my awakening and I would just could not understand how this had happened and, and what the F was fucking going on in the world when Donald Trump became president. Like that threw me. I did not see that coming and that threw me. And, and what came was, look, we know that change is supposed to happen. Big changes are supposed to happen in these next few years. And, and there's certain things that have to come into play to make those things happen, right? So if you see it as a story or a movie or a play, you have your different characters. And so in order to evoke, uh, evoke, an evolution in the story, you need these archetypes to come in and make that shit happen. 
<laughs> which leads us to the devil, which leads us to the ego card, which leads us to what we talked about yesterday and the description that I read from the angel tarot about that. So much about that was about our circumstances and feeling trapped and, and being an ego and being money centric and all of these things being about business, um, having to deal with, oh, that was with the nines with illness and stuff. But it was, it was about, uh, it was about the, just really about the situation that we're, we're all in with this pandemic. And it was also about the, the behavior and the choices in, and what was been going on with this guy, Donald Trump, who happens to be our president in the United States. Uh, so I was going to, I was going to crack open this book and start reading the devil. I keep opening right up to, uh, <laughs> starting on page 170. I need a drink. Hold on. Mm. Okay. Thanks for hearing me around, by the way. I hope that all of that made sense to you. I, I know that I, I, I'm a very fiery person. I'm very, very intense <laughs> on every side of my spectrum. I feel things very intensely. I've always been known as very passionate. Uh, I am a yeller. In case you haven't noticed, like if I get really upset, I don't think that that's ever going to change. That's just kind of who I am. Now it doesn't get there. It doesn't get there like it used to. And even when it when it did before, it wasn't like I was known like to have an anger problem by any stretch of the imagination. It would just, it, there would be the occasional explosion, I guess you could say, when like I was pushed just a little too fucking far. <laughs> and now you brought out Miss Nasty Pants is going to destroy you. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Free barriers. If you're going to come at me, you better be armed to the fucking gills because I will verbally eviscerate you. Be well armed is all I got to say. Be well armed. Try me. <laughs> and most people are just meh. So not only will I get loud, I will destroy you. Not that I like it, not that I've ever liked it, but I do have a point. I do have a breaking point. So, and, and I'm also one of those either you won't hear a peep out of me, like I will just silently go away and you will never hear from me. You will never see me. There will never be a confrontation. I will never get loud and never scream and never yell and never do anything crazy or wacky or anything like that. Nobody could ever say that I've been like that. I will just go away. If anything, people would be like, yeah, she disappeared. Never heard from her. Yeah. Because if I would have stuck around, chances are we would have got to that place where I would have got loud and eviscerated your ass. And why? <laughs> Let's just not go there. It's clear that whatever, you know, happened is not okay for me to be a part of. And, and I need to protect my space and my energy. And to do that means disengaging, disassociating, not being involved in energy that is, uh, mm, unhealthy, I guess you could say. And typically once it's got to that point, I would have brought things up a few times. So it's not like just all of a sudden infinity's gone or back in the day, Vanessa's gone, you know? It's like, no, nah, you know I'm gone, motherfucker. You know I'm gone. We didn't need to talk about it. <laughs> We've talked about it. I've talked about it. I've always been that way. I've always been one to communicate my grievances or what, because I can feel it and I know. So if, somebody, so if something's going on, I know it's going on. If it's, if it's a problem I'm having with somebody, I'm not just going to stuff it and let it ride and, you know, unless it's just really not worth it, then whatever. I really do believe and it's better to live happy than live, you know, be in the right and have, you know, be always having to be right. But at the same time, you don't, you're not, it's not okay and it's not healthy to be a doormat. 
and a lot of people are passive aggressive they're they lie they're narcissistic uh they're if not you know very self-centered and all of these different things that they a lot of people or the people that are like that hide or are good at are masquerading around most people but given who and what I am and my abilities to see through shit like I'm a human lie detector so it's really difficult for me to associate with people who are not like fully in alignment with the truth and and are just no bullshit and own their stuff and and are in balance with the give and the take energy and it's not all about them and uh all that stuff so that that to me is like i just need to live authentically you know i just need to live authentically and and if that means that in different times in my life i've needed to disengage from everybody uh well a lot of the time in my life i was really sick too so that was a big part of it that was a big part of it as well as far as you know being physically ill and not being able to engage with people or do anything you be you just naturally disengage with people so that's a thing as i've mentioned before <laughs> Anyway, okay, back to the matter at hand, you guys. All right, here we go. So I was going to crack open the book and get into the devil card. And uh, and then I just started looking at, I, I was looking for an illustration. And I just kept finding myself going further and further and further towards the beginning of the book, looking for this one illustration that I still can't find. Uh and I'm marking these pages so I can get back to them because these illustrations in this book are really awesome. Uh, they're really, really cool. And this is about the Hermetic Tarot, the, the Cabal. Uh, I'm sorry, the Kabbalah. And... And then I get to the introduction and it says... And I... <laughs> Believe it or not, I got this book and I've just dove into the different places I was guided to go at different times when I've done tarot or when I've been guided to open up the book and it lands on and I land on a certain page and I've been guided to read about it and, and I've done podcasts about it. But I've never sat down and read the introduction to the book and started just reading the textbook from like, you know starting at the front and going forward and there's a lot of really bitching information that as you're reading into the book it refers back to that would be good to know of course so as but as usual I don't I don't start that way <laughs> I wasn't guided to start that way so I didn't so I started just reading a little bit of this this introduction and and I figure it's probably a pretty good thing to share with you guys. So we'll get into this. Uh, it's sort of semi-long. And so I'm not sure how, how, how long this will be. It's not like super, super long. But I'll just dive in and see how long I can go. <laughs> Take another sip here. Again, thanks for hearing me uh, rant a little bit. Not gonna lie, I'm just a little bit delirious. I slept for like an hour and a half last night. It's 6.03 right now in the Pacific on the 30th. So we have a, a mirrored number going on. That's always fun. <laughs> Let's me know that I'm on the right track. So here we go. Introduction, Modern Tarot Studies, a 19th century legacy. So this is about talking about the tarot and how that all gets going here. Okay, here we go. This is a book of philosophy of metaphysics describing a profound system of self-exploration embedded in 78 simple pictures known as the tarot. And while these cards have long been publicly associated with odd cults and gypsy fortune tellers, they are increasingly capturing the attention of serious students who view the cards as a re 
repository of a very complex system for the development of inner knowledge. Perhaps the inventors of the tarot cards intended that they should be understood as a graphic summation of the principles of the Kabbalah, or perhaps not. At least there is no written evidence to suggest this. And the great Jewish scholar of Kabbalah, Gershom Sholem, is probably correct in his assertion, however deprecatory, that the connection was made by late 19th century English and French occultists. One way or another, the interlock of modern tarot, interpretation, and Kabbalah is so precise that the systems are mutually explanatory. And actually, the likelihood that the two systems developed independently gives far greater authority to the ideas of both because it points towards their mutual roots in universal truth. Yet, a great deal of nonsense has been written about both the tarot and the Kabbalah, the sale of a large percentage of occult literature being a tribute to the public's gullibility. Thus, we should be grateful for the scholarly works of the past few decades. Sholem pioneered studies on the Jewish, sorry, Jewish Kabbalah, while the Western trends have been ad, admirably researched by scholars such as Francis Yates, D.P. Walker, Francis King, and Alec Howe. Serious research is increasingly distur, disabusing. Wait, <laughs> sorry. Serious research is. Increasingly disabusing, disabusing hmm. us of incorrect notions about the roots of modern uh, esotericism. And we should not be disturbed to see sand castles tumbling. If a system has inner merit, it will remain unscathed. We must also appreciate what is known as the mysteries have have apparently as the mysteries have apparently until very recently been transmitted through a secret oral tradition despite increased public interest surprisingly little attention has been paid to the tarot by academia though the cards are a veritable gold mine of art history and metaphysical philosophy they should be of great interest to any medievalist being clearly of the same temperament which produced the, sculpt the sculptural programs of the Gothic cathedrals. It is likely also that the cards in some way relate to medieval books of Embeltmata and to Embelmata, yeah, E-M-B-L-E-M-A-T-A, and to those delightful and supposedly historical narratives called the Cansons de Guests. Cansons de Guests. What the tarot represents is an allegorical journey, each card being the experience of something, a universal energy along the way, rather like episodes in Dante's Divine Comedy. Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, or even Tolkien's Trilogy of the Ring. And the idea of an adventuresome and perilous journey through unknown territory was typical of medieval literature. The analogy here is that to travel in the Middle Ages was as dangerous and difficult as to travel the inner paths of the mysteries. So one might agree with the monk who in 1377 suggested that the tarot was a minor of 14th century society, saying that the cards represented the state of the world as it is now most ex excellently described and figured. Early decks show many of the virtues and liberal arts so important in the icon iconographic programs of Gothic humanism, some of which remain in today's standard tarot keys. Temperance is prudence, strength is fortitude, justice remains justice, etc. All of these cards are female 
as the virtues and liberal arts were always represented. Even an emperor was visible in the real society. And, sorry, that had been especially true since 800 when the Pope crowned Charlemagne Holy Roman Emperor in an attempt to strengthen Christianity by aligning it with a great secular power. And when he came to the high priestess, sorry, and when we came to the high pri come to the high priestess, we find that tradition related her to the legend of a female pope circulating at just this time in history. The evidence for the 14th century origin of the cards is convincing, and hopefully some historian of medieval art history will pick up these fascinating threads and provide us with real historical answers. How interesting. Hmm? On the other hand, a considerable number of well-trained esoterics insist that the cards are very ancient, are of a very ancient origin, which some claim to be an encounter of these individuals through the tarot with the shadows of other systems which have been used to approach the same universal energies. Such differentiation may be extremely difficult in an, in an inner plane and if so, might explain why the experiences of so many students contradict his historical evidence. Of course, if the tarot can be of use to us in something so important as the development of inner understanding, society of its origin, sorry, study of its origins is little more than a pleasant side trip. That's true. <laughs> the same is true for the very question of an original link between Kabbalah and the tarot. Although we are not here proposing that such a link was originally intended between tarot and the Hermetic Kabbalah on which this present book is based. That system developed from Europe from the time of the Renaissance is a westernized Kabbalah. It grew from the improbable attempts of 15th century philosophers to incorporate the essence of Jewish mysticism into Christian thought. The history of the modification of these ideas by the philosophers of 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries is particularly interesting. But it is the 19th century developments which are most important for us. During that time, the Hermetic Kabbalah, largely de-Christianized, reached its fullest expression with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. The leaders of that fraternity performed the remarkable task of unifying the disparate elements of the Western mystery tradition, Kabbalah, Hermeticism, Astrology, Neoplatonism, Dees, uh, Enochian magic, etc. In such a way that it formed a coherent method of inner exploration for the fin de celeste temperament. There are a few modern schools of Western esoteric thought which have not been affected in some way by the developments of that group. And as one discuss, discusses Hermetic Kabbalism, one of necessity refers to the Golden Dawn as its primary modern expression. Hermetic Kabbalah and Golden Dawn must be considered virtually synonymous. Nor is it significant whether a esoteric tenets, whether the esoteric tenets of this group were handed down secretly for generations, or if they were meticulously culled from ancient manuscripts in the British Museum. The authority of any group derives entirely from its inner context. The secret tradition, the mysteries, or whatever this may be called, can be tapped into by anyone. An individual or group becomes a part of an ancient tradition by contacting inner teachers in that tradition. And it would particularly, sorry, and it would certainly appear that the decks used to illustrate this book are the result of such inner contact. 
The three key decks of the modern era were all produced by members of that fraternity, the Golden Dawn Tarot, designed by McGregor Mathers, the, right weight, the Rider Weight deck, designed by A.E. Waite, and the Toth Tarot, designed by Aleister Crowley. A fourth ma major deck already mentioned is that of Paul Case for the Bota, B-O-T-A. His version is an excellent development of that issued by Weight. The Weight deck, one of the most popular ever published, seems to have been designed with such concern for oaths of membership in, that, in the order that it remains entirely exoteric. It is included in, that, in the hope that those who may have chosen to study the deck may find it, its often admirable, occasionally unacceptable symbolism more useful when considered from the standpoint of the Hermetic Kabbalah. The Golden Dawn Tarot is an esoteric deck intended for the private use of members of the order. Crowley's deck is also esoteric in that it conceals the 19th century order symbolism. Certainly, Crowley's Toth, Toth Tarot is the most original recent con contribution to tarot studies. Okay. Unfortunately, either Crowley nor Mathers was received appropriate, has received appropriate credit for their work with the tarot. And because of their occasionally outrageous behavior, both men have been fair game for, for societal, societal, his, so, what am I saying? Societal, social historians. Wow. Moreover, their scholarly limitations have made them the object of jokes by meticulous researches on the Hebrew Kabbalah. But a study of any mystery tradition, unless it be purely historical, requires that preconceived notions be set aside and that the system be judged solely on the merit of its if, if, wow, efficiency. Uh, one must use the word, oh, that's not the word. <laughs> Efficy. Efficacy. Efficacy. What is my problem right now? I can't have a hard time reading. Holy shit. Sorry, guys. Um, here we go. But a study of any mystery tradition, unless it is purely historical, requires that preconceived notions be set aside and that the system be judged solely on the merit of its efficacy. One must use the word efficacy because that is the only valid measure of a metaphysical system. Does it work? How do we establish whether it works or not? The answer to these questions is certainly not to be found through the present methods of sciences or of the humanities, which are predicated on those of science. Data is collected and analyzed empiri empirically. And since these ideas known as the mysteries do not lend themselves to this sort of attack being in high degree irrational, they may be de de den denigrated even by historians. Many knowledgeable scholars perceive late 19th century Hermetic Kabbalism as only a romantic and fanciful offshoot of Hebrew Kabbalism, unworthy of the sort of research devoted to esoteric Judaism. And the social toning of the materials as a cult adds to the wall of preconceived preconceptions and prejudgments. Oh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Tarot, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> it, it's no joke no joke at all uh and the problem rises in that to study any aspect of the mysteries uh any aspect of the mysteries the investigator must himself or herself become a part of the system mm, that complicates things a person must evaluate it from the inside which may make it appear that one has obligated investigative objectivity 
Today's acad academicism does not allow for the acquisition of knowledge through intuition and psych psychism and attitude placing it in paradoxical contradiction to a high proportion of those great thinkers whom the humanities study and purport to revere. In the humanities, the universities have deteriorated into observers of, rather than participants in, the development of mankind's creative and intellectual, intellectual faculties. I think I just gained a few points in my IQ just reading that paragraph. A more serious problem in terms of the cautious decimation of occult ideas is that any proofs which may emerge are valid only for the investigator himself. Carl Jung expressed this by stating that only the psyche can know the psyche. Hmm. <laughs> the fact is, however, that those who travel the inner paths using any given system have parallel experiences. Oh, definitely. The encounter of, for example, the experience, wait, the encounter of, for example, the energy symbolized by the universe card theoretically produces the same basic experience for everyone. It should be quickly added, however, that through what is known as the astral level of consciousness, one functions within the confines of a cultus. A Catholic, mystic, a Catholic mystic will learn the same lessons through the symbolism of Christianity that a Kabbalist learns through the symbolism of the Tree of Life. The universal energies are actually formless, yet we perceive them in the guise of our chosen system. It is at a level of the Christ, Buddha, Krishna intelligence that the unity of all systems become apparent and we are freed into pure consciousness. Thus, in these terms, one may appreciate that when the question is asked, does the system work? It means, is the symbolic structure of the system representative of universal truths sufficient to carry one beyond the system itself? In the case of the Hermetic Kabbalah and its practical tool, the tarot, there can be no doubt. This is an extremely potent system, particularly in that it may be incorporated into any school of thought or religion in which the student, student chooses to function. Of course, no one is asked to accept the statement on face value. Blind acceptance of anything whatsoever is contrary to the Kabbalistic method. Definitely. That's why I always say, don't take my word for it. Look into it yourself. Check this out for yourself. You know, like all I can do is, is say the truth in which I know it. But please don't take it at face value. Investigate for yourself. But that's exactly what he's saying. There's a paralog paradoxical situation that happens when you dive into this, into working with tarot in any way, shape, or form, whether you decide to seek guidance of the tarot through some through a reader and seer like somebody like myself, or you decide to start diving in on your own, you have to decide to have faith in the system. That the system and the and the the energies that are going to bring us the information through the cards to give us what we need to know at any given time. And what's so amazing about tarot is that, and why I, I was guided to this and why I, I got this deck, the Hermetic Tarot, and it's very powerful, the cards that come up. Um, if you've been following me and, and listening to each and every one of these podcasts, then you definitely will remember that there was and I've got to go back and find it. Uh, but there was definitely one where I started pulling cards and almost every single card in the deck was upside down. And that was very telling. And I keep thinking about that these last couple days. Remember that. Remember that pull. Remember that pull where it was like card after card after card after card after card every single 
fucking one for like 20 something cards that has never happened before. And I'm trying to remember the rest of it that was going on around that time or what it was all about because I don't. I do remember that there's, it also seemed to be something to do with our government or our president. I, I, that seems very, tell, very much in that energy, but it's just something I keep on thinking about because you know how rare it is to pull that many cards and them all to be in reverse? All of them? There was like, at the very beginning, there was one that was straight up. At the very end, there was one that was straight up, I think. Because that's the way that the poll went. And everything in between was upside down. And I keep thinking about that. So this is just an example. And this is just a precursor to where we are now. I think everybody can say, yeah, we're a little upside down in our world. <laughs> I don't think anybody would be like, well, what are you talking about? What's the symbol? What's the symbolism there? Uh, I think it's pretty, pretty obvious what the symbolism is there. And, and if you, if you're working with the tarot or you're working with somebody who's working with the tarot or observing just by like watching me on my YouTube videos or, or listening to the podcast, you will see just how this comes up. And what's so cool about the tarot is the same card can mean different things for different situations, even though it has its overall meaning. And that's what's so great about a book like this because it dives deep and I love it. As you can see, this is somebody who, who has studied this. And, and if you've been part of this podcast for a while and heard me read from this book, you know what, what comes up here. And I know, and I never said like, oh, I, I'm a student of this is like my first like introduction to this. I don't know the Kabbalah. I've never studied any religion. Uh, but it's clear that, or scripture, but it is clear that the more, like, I didn't know, I had no idea when I started working with tarot a few years ago that it, 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 there was any connection to, to the Kabbalah or that it had any connection to any, any fraternity uh, of mysticism, mysticism or, and, and studies of, of energy. Cause that's really what it is. It's a study of energy. Uh, it's the study of connecting. Like, like he said, it's the study of connecting. That's what it's all about. It's about connecting to the universal knowledge, to the truth. Okay. So continuing. The search for the truth, the next section. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was funny. The chances are good that most readers of this book are disillusioned with both organized religion and science. Neither seem to provide the insight into our human condition demanded by an increased worldwide sophistication. We have learned so much through the wonders of technology and modern communications that the explanations of our fathers appear more placebo than pan pansia. Many of those so delusioned turn to occultism and mysticism in the hope of finding broader meaning and truth. They do so in the essential belief that direct knowledge of the cosmic order enlightenment is possible. The mystery schools teach that what we can see, touch, and feel presents us with only a relative reality. Beyond that which is considered real by most people are worlds of, a, worlds of an even greater reality. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to start over with that. Beyond that which is considered real by most people are worlds of an even greater reality, which every individual has the capacity to explore. Most certainly. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I was on my Instagram just yesterday, the day before, I wrote that even while we might be confined, you have the doorway to the universe. So you're as confined as you decide you are. 
Enlightenment means emergence from the darkness of our limited sense perceptions and thought framework into a consciousness of the greater reality. It is of that from which we are born and into this that we shall return at the end of our brief life cycle. The Kabbalah is a system once traditionally claimed prior to the work of Sholem is to have been given by Adam to Adam by God to have been the province of a few chosen adepts until it became Hellenized by the Greeks and began to form a subcurrent of Western civilization. The value of this system is that it div divides the universe into the specific categories. Allowing for the establishment of correspondences between all cults and religions. The tarot cards also may be equated with the major aspects of most, re most religious systems. Hmm. Esoteric tradition as represented by the tarot makes some very basic statements about man and the nature of the universe which is immediate which is our immediate environment. It says that there is a perfect order which one has the capacity to perceive and that there is no such thing as an accident. Yeah, there is no such thing as an accident. <laughs> Coincidence, accidents, uh, no, no such thing. That's why I was saying earlier, you know, this thing with, uh, with Trump being president was like how I, I just had a hard time with it because I'm like, I, there's gotta be a reason. I just don't get it. Cause it's insane, you know? And, and it took a, it took a while for me to, to finish having a, a, a tantrum about it for the realization of the bigger meaning of it. Uh, and for my guides to be like, you know, there's purpose in every, you know, you've known this. So there's purpose in everything. There is never an accident ever. There is a means to an end. There is a, there is the catalyst. There is the, the reaction to the inaction. You know, there's this, the yin and the yang. There's always that polarity. And so when change needs to be made, things turn over. There is the, we need the destruction to have the construction. So, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Uh, it cracks me up. For, for every movement of every leaf on every tree, there is a sudden, sorry, there is a reason, a, vi oh, God, sorry. Let me start over here. Uh-oh, dropping stuff. Uh, I'll start here. Here we go. It says that there is a perfect order which one has the capacity to perceive and that there is no such thing as an accident. For every movement of every leaf on every tree, there is a reason and every movement of everything is interrelated. Separateness is a myth. We are all part of one great unity. These principles have been expressed for thousands of years and the thousands and in thousands of ways and somehow as expressed they are always simple. The concept that all is one and we are all has a certain poetry to it. It may strike a deep rooted chord and then be quickly forgotten. But there is a feeling that the statement has merit. The words of prophets may imbue us with this with a strange and momentary silence, as if our minds are straining to recall something. Hmm. Students may respond in this way to a small book from 1912 called the Kybal Kybalion. It's K Y B A L I O N, Kybalion. This work involves all of the key principles of tarot and purports to sum up ancient hermeticism. The ideas here are actually the same sorts of Gnostic thought that produce the Kabbalah. Hermeticism and Kabbalah both date from the period of earliest Christianity. When we describe the Hermetic Kabbalah, we mean the later 
amalgram, amalgram of the principles of both. Amalgam, yeah. The Kybalion gives seven hermetic principles. These are quite literally a distillation of the universal principles on which the tarot is based and deserve to be subject of every student's meditation. They are, number one, the principle of mentalism. The all, sorry, the all is mind. The universe is mental. Number two, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. Number three, the principle of vibration. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Number four, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like the like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but have wait. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Number five, the principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Number six, the principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law, not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. Number seven, the principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and its feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. The doctrine that our universe is so precisely ordered is basic to the tarot, as is the idea that the tarot images accurately symbolize the very framework of the universe. As McGregor Mather stated, I have not only transcribed the symbolism, but have tested, studied, compared, and examined it both clairvoyantly and in other ways. The result has been to show me how absolutely correct the symbolism of the book T, meaning tarot, is and how exactly it represents the occult forces of the universe. Hmm. Elpheus Levy described the tarot in even more flamboyant terms. Although it is, in quotes, although it is popular in a sense and may be found everywhere, this is of almost occult and unknown. Because it is the key to the rest. It is, in truth, a monumental and extraordinary work, strong and simple as the architecture of the pyramids, and consequently enduring like those. A book which is a summary of all sciences, which can re resolve all problems by its infinite combinations, which speaks by evoking thought. It is an inspirer, a moderator of all possible conceptions, and the masterpiece, perhaps, of the human mind. It is to be counted unquestionably among the great gifts bequeathed by us to us by antiquity. Levi was among the first to claim publicly that the tarot was more than merely a quaint device for telling fortunes, and that it, it was virtually the key to all occult, occult sciences. Yeah, I would have to back that up, though, <laughs> uh, because it's it's true. I mean, it, it there are infinite combinations. It's it is a an absolute no doubt about it uh, key and keys to the universe and your and your world and and information that you need and tapping in with your guides and depending how you use it and who you're using it with and what you're using it for uh really depends on on your experience with it as well just like it would be with any tool all right continuing Clearly, for one, to take this approach to the tarot requires a considerable amount of faith, 
But this should be a faith which is understood to represent merely a suspension of judgment. One who fails to exercise rational judgment or who accepts any esoteric principle unquestionably is a poor candidate for inner development. Very true. We must engage our very capacity, our every capacity, and the capacity to reason is our greatest protection against being led astray in these matters. One might also suggest that the methods of the Hermetic Kabbalah will be particularly attractive to those who are natively intellectual, artistic, or both. Kitty, what in the hell? Sorry, my cat decided to travel all over my table to get to where she wanted to go. Okay, where was I? <laughs> the Hermetic Kabbalah will be particularly attractive to those who are natively intellectual, artistic, or both. These methods are not for everyone, and to study them efficiently requires a significant commitment. The pursuit of any specific method of spiritual development, development represents a choice. And herein lies another important principle. The principle is frequently encountered in popular literature couched in ephorcitic effor terms such as we are masters of our own destiny or the stars impel, they do not compel. We are in fact the authors of our every experience from the non-accidental of our, <laughs> I love that, from the non-accidental of our birth and death, I'm sorry, of our birth and the parents whom we choose to the very time, to the very time and circumstances of our death. Okay, I'm going to read that over again because it was, we are in fact the authors of our every experience from the non-accident of our birth and the parents whom we choose to the very time and circumstances of our death. Some of the inspired religious literature of the West hints at this idea. It is a principle which has been stated openly and explicitly in Eastern religions for thousands of years. Yeah, you know, it is true. We do choose all that business. We, <laughs> we do choose all that business. We choose when we are born, we choose uh, what our, who our parents are, we choose the body that we come into, we choose our gender, we choose, uh, we choose our path, our mission, we choose the people who are in our, in our soul trip and journey and, and family and group, we choose what our missions are going to be, we choose all of that stuff, uh, we choose and we do choose the how we're going to die. So that is also something to think about when, when we're losing people to this, uh, to this pandemic on a soul based level, this has been an understood circumstance all along. And that also needs to be respected as well. It, it, we need to extrapolate our perceived understanding of this reality and how it makes us feel when we lose people and when we lose people in mass and when, when there's this mass exodus and it's been a very long time, just over 100 years since we've had such a mass exodus so quickly. But we're just beginning this decade and we have to see it for, for higher purposes for, from what it is. And I've already been given information that, that those that are crossing over are, 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 uh, so prepared for that on the other side and but they're also going and and they're transitioning in a way where it seems like they're they're standing with their guardians but they're not moving they're not like moving forward yet they're just like trant they're just on the other side like this is just pushing them through the curtain is what it feels like to me and i think on a on a kind of a global level it's kind of like 
are all these people really gone even though there's you can you know there's obviously they are it's just it's difficult to wrap our head around because there's so much of the energy that's still here so we need to understand try to lift our way up from our limited perceptions of things uh, and that does help definitely to remember these things okay continuing here some of the inspired religious literature of the west hints at this idea it is a principle which has been stated openly and expl explicitly in eastern religions for thousands of years this is not an easy concept to accept because it lays full credit or blame for all that occurs on our lives squarely on our own shoulders but this does not imply that we are necessarily aware of the decision-making process. That is the province of the higher self, that spiritual part of ourselves which endures while the personalities molded for each successive incarnation dissipate and cease to be, save as they represent experiences assimilated by the higher self. The pursuit of enlightenment is the pursuit of the knowledge and conversation of the holy guardian angel aspect of the higher self. This means the development of the conscious awareness of and contact with an innermost spiritual nature, which is the essence of God. The goal is a lofty, <laughs> the goal is a lofty one. The, the decision to pursue it seriously as well as the means of pursuit, pivotal choices. And here one must not lose sight of the fact that whatever the chosen path, whatever that, whether that be tarot or yoga or Catholic mysticism, it is a means of self-exploration and not an, an end in itself. Yet, as Jung points out, some people try to escape into a system. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own souls. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't get me started, Jung. Don't get me started. <laughs> they will practice Indian yoga in all its exercises, observe a strict regimen of diet, learn... Uh, Theosophy by heart or mechanically repeat mystic texts from the literature of the whole world, all because they cannot get on with themselves and have not the slightest faith that anything useful could ever come out of their own souls. So it's distraction, distraction, distraction kind of business that goes on with people to keep them from their souls. And this is why I'm soul fucking soul centric with everything that I do it's all about the soul everything that I do about the soul my if you go to my website the word soul is probably on there five billion times because and what I do when I work with people is we talk about the soul code what's your soul code you have a soul code there's keys to your soul code and it's about figuring that out and interestingly enough before I I got into any of this and all of this goes by the keys and it's all it's all about the soul and, and the tree of life and the journey of, of the self and and consciousness and what he's talking about here with enlightenment and getting to know our souls it's always my question do you know your soul <laughs> tapped in there because most people are like i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> And I get it. I've, I've been there. I understand that. It's, it's like he says, it's a very serious choice. You have to take it seriously um, in order to cross through certain gates and initiations and processes and, and planes of understanding and existing and processing through the energy as you move forward in this, in this way of understanding. And by no means are we ever finished. We're not. And it's just a continuous, infinite, what he says, with each incarnation, we just, we just keep going. We're just, it's just a continuous journey. And, um, and with each one of those, when we're put here in this reality, it's to remember. It's, it's kind of like what he said was like, you're like, ah, that sounds 
familiar. It's because it is familiar. You are remembering. It sounds right and it feels right in, in, right in your chest. Uh, energetically, when you hear something that's on point, you're like, huh. Or if it captures your, your imagination, if it captures your attention in a way that other things don't usually. Uh, that usually means something. That is tapping into a recognition on some level that tells you pay attention, follow this, pull on this cord, see what happens. Put your energy into that. And in this reality, it's really easy to be distracted by life. However, at this time, we have, a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands. And uh, there's some people that are working from home. And there's a lot of people who are not working and they're just at home. And, and this would be a good time to maybe dive into some things if you're being guided because it's there for a reason we have this time for a reason like he said everything happens for a reason nothing is left to chance and that can kind of be a mind twisty fuck because you can kind of go down infinite rabbit holes as to why each little infinitesimal thing is unfolding the way that it does and I think all of us who really awaken on in high levels go through a period of that because we're starting to we really understand the mechanisms that are happening and it can be really distracting you can even sit and just think of different eventualities and see them playing out and seeing all the different timelines and how different things connect and why this would happen or that would happen and all sorts of stuff if you really want to if you really decide to go there you can just mentally just go because there are all those infinite possibilities so they do exist on some level and you can go and find them in your in your meditative state um it's not something I would recommend doing for too long because you'll find your days kind of slipping by because you're actually not doing anything. You're thinking about doing stuff. And I know that all of, like I said, all of us that are getting more downloads and understanding and transmuting and healing and clearing and going through, you know, this process all go through a period of that because we need to be able to work that out for ourselves to remind ourselves of that in different situations because again in this reality it's easy to get sidetracked with stuff okay moving on it is a sad fact that many disturbed people are attracted to all forms of occult work there are people who look for an escape but do not find it an unbalanced personality unable to cope with its own earthly environment will find little solace in the tarot or, or in any other facet of, facet of the mysteries. Instead, such persons may find esoteric research very disconcerting as they discover themselves required to face aspects of their own personalities with which they cannot cope or increasingly immersed in their own fantasies and losing touch with reality. The dawning awareness of the truth of the universal order is difficult for most balanced per difficult for the most balanced personality because it involves concepts that totally refute what most people believe themselves to be. Oh, I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That is freaking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. So true. It's really difficult to go there. Hey, little bear, knock it off. It's, it is difficult to go there for a lot of people. Or they, they, dip, they dip toes in. They scratch the surface. They allow themselves to get uh, distracted with other things and... And it's easy. It's really easy to do because let me tell you, there are forces at play that want to distract you from going there. And, and the fact that everything that you've been told about yourself, reality, universe, 
God, mother, father, God, not, you know, most people not understanding the concept of, of, of that we went through here with these five, with these seven principles, the, the fact that there is this balance in, in gender energy with the divine feminine and the divine masculine that we talk about a lot here too. Uh, just all of these things, we're not on a whole in society, we're not taught a lot of things that would keep us connected to our souls as we grow up. It's the very opposite. And once we get to a point where we're like, okay, what is happening here? What is with life? Because what the fuck? Uh, and you start to, what, in whatever situation it is for you, we all have our own path to that. Why am I here? What am I doing? What is going on? What is the point? Questions that eventually you're like sincerely asking. You're like, no, but I really want to know. Like, I'm not just saying that. Like, what the fuck? Like, I really want an answer. Can I get an answer, please, as to what I'm doing here? Why am I here? What am I doing? Why am I here? Like, you just, you know, like, if you've gotten to that point, you're going to start getting your answers. Now, whether you stay locked in to the answers is another story. And that's where a lot of people veer off because that's exactly like what he's saying here. The dawning awareness of the truth of the universal order is difficult for the most balanced personality because it involves concepts that are to that totally refute what most people believe themselves to be. There is a cause and effect here, which is the reason that so many esoteric works, including a, include a warning. Mm, very true. Anyone can learn to manipulate the kundalini forces of their own body and open the channels by which light descends. The methods are basically very simple and are openly described in, with a wor in works such as Regardi's middle pillar and in his foundations of practical magic. Yet, if the basic preparatory work has been ignored or done casually, the result may be a systemic imbalance rather than balance and increased vitality and awareness. These dangers are one that the mysteries maintain strict secrecy for many centuries. These dangers are one reason that the mysteries maintain strict secrecy for so many centuries. Yeah, not everybody should <laughs> is equipped to uh, work with the power that we all really have, truly. It's, it's like, don't tell them how powerful they are because <laughs> maybe that's not the best thing. <laughs> Tradition states that the mysteries maintained secrecy as a matter of keeping sacred ideas from the profane. Although we appreciate that in some ages past, secrecy was also kept, has also kept the metaphys, metaphys, metaphysician from being burned at the stake. Yeah, no shit. But over the centuries have also understood the responsibility of conveying practical techniques to those who might misunderstand or misapply the principles of their use. Yeah, in certain times, if you are really, uh, if you shared information or they found out that you knew information or practiced certain, certain rituals or, or did certain things energetically knew and, and were a powerful person, light body i mean you were a witch and you were it was not good uh i have very vivid um visions of that uh yeah okay um tradition states that the mysteries maintain secrecy as a oh i already read that uh Even today, one could argue reasonably that the practical esoteric techniques should be kept secret. 
although so much has now been published that the point is purely mute, uh, mute, moot. And the fact is that there are no real secrets, as most people understand the word. Herein lies the crux of it, of all occultism, mysticism, and esoteric religion. In fact, one important secret is so simple that it can be conveyed in a single paragraph. Ooh, there we go. What is called enlightenment depends on the physical opening of channels so that the consciousness of the personality can directly contact the consciousness of the greater universe. What this means is a manipulation of vibrations within the body and a subtle change in physiochemistry. It is all a form of yoga where one experiences what feels like an electromagnetic current in the body. Everyone has felt this current and anyone can learn to manipulate it. Moreover, this has nothing whatsoever to do with the school of mysticism or occultism in which one operates. The directive, inflame thyself with prayer, meaning to excite the inner currents of the body, is the practical essence of Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and every legitimate form of mystery, religion, or cult. To the technique of manipulation of body energies, the Hermetic Kabbalah adds a program of inner vis visualization. One begins by imagining an inner scene, a tightly created and directed daydream. Soon, however, one discovers that what is happening is not an invention. <laughs> the tarot is, of course, ideal for this kind of visualization known as pathworking or rising on the planes. To focus on any given key is to turn attention to a specific intelligent energy as anthropomorphized in a card. Oh my goodness. This very focus of attention tends to affect an unconscious link with the energy which the card symbolizes. This is not to suggest, however, that the tarot offers any shortcuts, for it does not. One who chooses to study the tarot by the Kabbalistic method must must do so with dis discretion, sensitivity, completeness, and acceptance of a certain disciplined boredom <laughs> until positive results are obtained, which may take years. Those who make this system work do so by pursuing strict meditative exercises without concern for result. Yeah. And, and strict meditative exercises can be different things, but specifically just being strict about meditating <laughs> is a big one. But results do come and one begins to perceive the entire system very differently. Appreciating the fluidity which, with which the cards must be interpreted. A key may have several possible interpretations, some even apparently contradictory. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Particularly when it represents a path on the upper levels of the tree of life. Thus, the value is inherent in the card can never be attributed to a few catchphrases each easily memorized. Yeah, exactly. Alistair Crowley in his book, in his book of Toth makes the point that what he can say about a card may either represent a small part of its meaning or may not necessarily appear to make sense. Often in that work, Crowley finds a card so profound that you must resort to the word symbols of poetry to approach its most serious implications. He was also uniquely honest in his assertion, published in The Confessions of Alistair Crowley, that he did not completely understand all of the cards. He wrote, The true significance of the Addis of Tatui, or Tarot Trumps, also await, and the Trumps are uh, like the major arcana cards, uh, also awaits full understanding. 
I have satisfied myself that these 22 cards compose a complete system of hieroglyphs representing the total energies of the universe. In the case of some cards, presumably referring to his own deck, I have succeeded in restoring the original form and giving a complete account of their meaning. Others, however, I understand imperfectly, and of some few I have at present obtained no more than a general idea. Certainly the tarot offers a great potential for self-deception. We can believe we have understood some aspect of the study, yet still be working within a very personal and distorted framework. For this reason, it is best to refer at every step of the learning experience. Uh, to the time-honored documents on the subject. For the tarot, this means the Sefer Yetz Yetzera, a very brief work by which we relate the Hebrew letters to the tarot keys. Another great work is the source book of the Jewish Kabbalah, the Zohar, a mystical commentary in many volumes which has never fully has never been fully translated into a European language. Wow. Some claim that the greatest Kabbalistic work of all is the Pen Pentateuch, Pentate Pentateuch of Moses. Oh, pen whatever that word is. Of Moses, the first five books of the Bible. Yeah, not familiar. The study of the first four books in Hebrew and on the basis of numerology is is the essence of Jewish Kabbalah. On the surface, all of this may seem inapproachably complex, but the intellectual Kabbalah, as opposed to as opposed to the practical work, is easily understood by anyone willing to consider it with the intensity and diligence that one would appre app wait that one would apply to the learning of a new language. The Kabbalah is essentially artificial. It is a defining pattern imposed on qualities which would otherwise be too impossibly fluid to grasp. By example, one could cite the idea of period, periodization in history. There is obviously no line of demicar, demic, uh, demic, Oh my God, I can't do this word. There is obviously no line of demic demarcate. Oh my God, that is not a hard word. I'm really tired. It's hitting me. There is obviously no line of, I'm doing it again, demarcation between the centuries. Oh my God, my brain. Uh, <laughs> how embarrassing. <laughs> But to place blocks of ideas and social styles within the brackets arbitra arbitrarily established as the 18th, 19th, or 20th centuries is useful. Oh my God, that is hard. Yeah, my eyes are starting to... Oh, and I'm at the end. Cool. Thank goodness, because my eyes just decided to go, bye. <laughs> They're twinking out on me, like literally. Oh, man, I used to be super dyslexic, and I couldn't read at all. It was, God, it was something that really would piss off my mom when I was a little kid that I just could not read because I saw everything, like, upside down and mirrored, and, and you know, that's what it is when you're uh, dyslexic. But they'll also just, like, the letters will just, like, move around, especially if you're tired. Like, when you're tired for somebody who's dyslexic, it's like, forget it. Like, your your, your eyes just can't physically tired, mentally tired, it'll definitely be difficult to keep those letters straight. Because that's not a hard word. Demarcation. Not hard at all. <laughs> I'm like, demicar, demicar, car, like, having such a hard time. Okay, but we're at the end in the sense in which now he goes into each of the different tarot decks. Um which I'm not going to do right now. I just really wanted to get through and to get through the, this introduction and what his 
understanding and philosophy is about tarot and how it relates. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I just hit a wall. And how it relates to uh, to the tarot because I work with the tarot so much around here. It's what I do. Uh, it's my new Groupon on Groupon, you guys. If you guys have not been there yet and checked out my new Groupon, go ahead and check it out. Uh, the link is in uh, the description of this podcast and of the last couple. I believe it's pretty simple. If I could find the page, uh, I believe it's pretty simple. I think it's just Groupon.com slash deals. Uh, yeah, slash deals slash the dash healing dash butterfly. So, and the, and the link is in the description. So go ahead and take a look at the link in the description, check out my Groupon and, uh, take advantage of this great deal right now. And hopefully you're inspired with hearing some more about how tarot works, um, how it is to work with the tarot, the hermetic tarot, uh, these principles are the same and my understanding of of the cards and 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 getting deeper into this only helps me when i'm doing readings uh because I, i hey i'm still learning this is a tarot is is a beautiful artistic soul spirit science, you know, this scientific kind of in its own way, uh, put together system that is just, like you said, it's just so beautifully put together. It makes so much sense that I was guided to it because there is, it is, it is in its own right as a whole, a key. It's all a key to unlocking more information for ourselves. It's, It's not perfect and it's not some sometimes so easy to understand and to grasp how it's happening or what is coming or or whatever. And with somebody like me, it's not only the cards, but it's the psychic impressions. It's the information that I'm getting with the cards. Sometimes it's just looking at the symbols of the cards and being drawn to certain aspects and, and seeing things in a card that maybe I didn't see before and it taking on whole new meaning because of what I'm being told psychically about the card and the situation and, and what it means. And so that's why it's also endless because aside from what the meaning of each card is, and that's what he was talking about, like if you're confused, go back to the original meaning of it. If you're like, I don't get this. Why is this here? Why is this card here and it's not coming to you? Then then go back to the to the original distinction of what the card was was made for. And, and take a look at the symbolism of, of the art on the card. And that's what, what's really cool about tarot is that there's the basic principle of each of the cards, but then the interpretation of what is comes out in the card from any, any person that's doing and putting together a deck is, is all different very different so also the decks that you're guided to use or the the seers that you go to the psychics that you go to that they use the kind of energy that they're working with matters as well so there's a lot of different things to take into consideration there it's not for everybody uh on either side (laughs) it's not for everybody for those who are drawn to it on either side though it's an amazing tool and it is another another way to know yourself better and and break through that curtain um, the veil and as he said it's it's not the easiest thing to to take a look at yourself excuse me and a lot of the time tarot really makes you take a look at yourself because <laughs> that's what it's meant to do so that's something to consider about it too all right i'm gonna go because i'm gonna pass out 
<laughs> it is 714 in the Pacific. I hope you guys are great. Hope that you enjoyed my reading here. Sorry, I destroyed a few parts there. Um, <laughs> have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be back soon, you guys. And uh, stay safe, stay inside, keep your social distancing going. If you know of anybody that has COVID or thinks they do or was diagnosed, please, 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 please refer them to my website. Let them make their own decision about if they want to work with me or not. I'm doing this on a donation basis. Pay what you can when you can. That literally means like I, I only have $10 or I can pay 150 or, you know, whatever. I, it's fine. I just, I want to help people through this and I know that I can. So take a look at my website, refer other people to my website. Um, as far as COVID, you can also go to my my services, the rest of them are there for my energy healing and uh, all the tarot stuff, the clearing, um, different, different, all the sorts of stuff. I do a lot of stuff. So take a look, you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget the key is to create. And I love you already. Have a great day, guys.